Hey there, welcome back to an old series that we haven't done in a while, Behind the Image. It's basically where I take an image that I photographed, I have some behind the scenes footage, you can see me actually shoot it, and I'm breaking down a thought process, and normally I am speaking to uh, how I got a certain desired outcome, and today is a little bit different, but I'm excited because this is something very simple, but actually weirdly complicated at the same time. So we're gonna dive in, glad you're here. All right, just a little bit of background on this wedding day and this location and the time of day that I'm shooting. This was shot in the middle of the day. They did a first look. It was a very high-end wedding at a beautiful venue. This venue is interesting because everyone wants to shoot with the venue in the background, um, which is totally doable. Uh, it's actually positioned well to do this because at this time of the day, I think it was, um, October, beginning of October, and it was kind of like, it was maybe one o'clock, two o'clock in the afternoon. So the sun was actually getting a little bit lower. It wasn't right above their heads. I'm, I'm gonna break down a lighting decision that I came to on accident, but produced a better result than the initial setup that I chose. So let's go, you're gonna watch me actually photograph this quick part of the day. You can see it from behind the scenes. We're gonna go to that now and then analyze and deep dive some of the final images. You look great. Everybody is smiling right here at me. One, two, and three. Oh yes, little adjustment. Here we go, one, two, and I love that. Guys, Dover Hall has never looked so good. Don't tell my other Dover Hall couples that, but seriously, never looked so good. Here we go, one, two, and three. Good job, Tyler, I saw you, girl, good job. Perfect, so what we're gonna do now, blank stare, model shot, no smiling. There. So pay attention to where I'm standing. That little shadow is caused by a tiny little chimney on top of Dover Hall. And that tiny little shadow, that skinny sliver right there is what is allowing me to step back and shoot with a longer focal length with my seven, uh, 28 to 70. Uh, which creates more compression, which I think is more beautiful in portraits. So I could just get a lot closer to them and shoot at 28 millimeters, but there's not going to be as much bokeh and compression in the background, which I really love. So I'm getting what I love, even though I'm standing in the harsh light, just because I am protected by this shadow and I'm protected from unwanted haze. Very editorial. Oh, wow. A couple more. Bride and groom forehead to forehead. Perfect. Almost done. I'm Just to point out, I am not standing in the chimney shadow right now, and that's why I keep holding my hand up. I take a wide shot trying to get like the car in, and it was way too much haze, so I learned my lesson. But anyway, just wanted to explain, because I just said, I'm standing in the shadow, and now I'm not. Michael is shooting with, uh, slight, uh, I think he's shooting with the same lens, so he might not, he might be having some haze too. But I'm realizing I kind of hit my limit there. I have to stay in the shadow to avoid that haze that you just saw coming into the filming camera. Um, okay, guys, this is perfect. Now, humor me, everyone is gonna come towards me a few feet for lighting reasons. So can you pick up her dress when you walk and that way nothing steps on it? The whole line, Michael, will you help him? The whole line's coming towards me quite a, quite a decent amount. Keep on coming. I'm looking for this light to keep on coming, keep on coming. Yeah, you see the glow in your head? Keep on coming. She's like, I don't see it, but I, I, I believe you. Not all the way. Right here is perfect. That's good. I don't think I can get all of them in the light. You're good. You're good. You can go back in. It's just getting this reflective light on you a little bit more. I think. Is that what I want? Okay. All right. So now you're getting in a little closer. Smile and walk. Here we go. One, two, and three. We're walking. We're laughing. We're walking. Danielle, you're laughing at me, girl. Keep it coming, keep it coming. Danielle's laughing at me, wow. Keep, keep laughing at me, girl. Yes, they're gonna share a kiss, share a kiss. <laughs> Guys, I'm sorry, can we, do, can we do one more shot? The light here is awesome. Don't even move, stay like you are. You're just kind of smiling at each other in the background and they're smiling at me. We've just been standing here for an We've just been standing here, it's totally fine. <laughs> Stay like that, Danielle. That's perfect. Y'all are laughing in the background. They're looking at me. Bride and groom are sharing a kiss. Y'all are laughing at each other again. Wow. Okay, everyone's walking a few more feet and then we're done. We're walking. We're laughing. This is the best day ever. Yes. Danielle, you can look at me, girl. Wow. Holy cow. I, your gallery is going to be massive. All right, so now that you've seen that clip and you saw the reality of where they started further back, I backed up, took a wide shot. I'm like, oh gosh, too hazy. And then I decided to 
move them, and find a solution to be able to make the glow work without the haze, we're going to break down exactly what was happening there. So if you look on the screen, we're going to look at an image um, of just the bridal party in complete shade of the building. So in front of them, you saw in the recording, there was reflection of harsh sunlight hitting the pea gravel, the white pea gravel. It's actually a great reflector um, and bouncing back up on them. But I cropped out that line of light um, so it's not distracting. But it means that the light on their faces is really nice. It's filling in uh, eye sockets. There's no weird color reflections under the chin. It's very easy to edit. This is fine. There's nothing wrong with this, um, but could it be better? And maybe that is the greatest takeaway from this is that there are sometimes situations where you can be in a safe zone for lighting and it's great, but you can also take a risk and challenge yourself and find an even better setup for lighting. So this is fine. This is what I consider the safe zone. Uh, it's also a very large bridal party. It's not like I got three people on each side. So it's a large, large bridal party. I need to fit them into a certain space. Notice in here the distance between the bridesmaids and the groomsmen and the um, bride and groom from the building. So they're not right up against the building. I have shot here before where they have to be right up against the building because it was shot earlier in the day or earlier in the year. And the line of light was like right up on the window. So I had to really fit them into a tiny little sque squeezed in section. Here, they have freedom to be pulled away from the building a little bit more, which I always love because the more that you pull them away from a background, the more dimension you're naturally going to have. So this is fine. Let's look at the image where I pulled back and took a wide shot pretty quickly just for fun. And that's when my brain and the creative juices started flowing about, could I change this up? All right. So in this image, I backed up a little bit. Dad's Jeep truck, the... Land Rover, I don't know what it is. It's it's something, um, is in the background. And I just thought, okay, dad might like it. So I back up, um, I shoot a little bit wider. I was probably shooting with a 28 to 70 here. And it's not bad, but it's not great. Why is it not great? Well, I don't know about you, but I don't love this. And I don't love that. What would fix that? Definitely a lens hood. I get it. Yes, a lens hood could have helped in this situation. But I don't like shooting with a lens hood. And I don't, I like... <laughs> I don't like carrying it around. I don't need it most of the time. And a lot of the times when I find myself needing it, I find a solution to work without it. Um, and that's exactly what I did here. So I shot this pretty quickly, stood far back. I'm like, oh gosh, it's too hazy. But then I started realizing, okay, once they started walking and once they start, I started to pull them away from the wall even more so, I started realizing that the same light that I see here is hitting them behind the heads and it was beautiful. And it added so much dimension. It was so much more interesting, more glowy. I love the pop. The skin tones were still awesome. But the only way to make that work is to strategically place myself in between the sun and a certain object that is very unassuming. But it's this very tiny chimney right here. It's not very big. It's actually very small compared to the rest of the house. But if I could align myself with the sun and the chimney and the end of my lens, then I would be able to capture glow without the haze. I'd provide more dimension and it would honestly kind of mimic a little bit of golden hour light. So let's look at the next image, which is the final image that I think all of this is leading to that looks just a lot better, a lot more visually interesting than these previous images that we were looking at. All right, so this image, the reason why I love it is I love the glow. I love that they're pulled away from the building. The first image was fine, but it's this traditional stoic standing in front of the ivy, no glow, no dimension, just a very safe shot. This is not so safe, but I learned from taking that wide shot with the ugly sun flare that I just have, if I wanted this look, I'm just going to have to have a little bit more control over my placement and my lens placement in relationship to the sun. So thank goodness for that chimney because I was able to photograph them walking with the glow and the chimney because it was in line with the end of my lens and the sun protected me from having any more haze. So I had to be strategic about that while also getting them to do something that looks a little bit natural and adding some movement. So after I had them moving and walking and I realized this was an option, I end up staying here and taking some more portraits because I realized this light is the best. It's a little bit frustrating as a photographer. This happens to me a lot where I'm shooting and I get a lot done. And then I realize right when it's time to go to somewhere else, 
this is actually the better lighting. So then I rush and I get a lot done because when you see light like this, it is hard not to use it. So the reason I love this so much is basically I love the glow on the back of their heads. It's actually hitting everybody except it stops here and it stops here. But at a general glance, it looks like everybody has that angelic glow. I like the distance between them and the back of the building. And I also love that I don't have any awful haze coming from the sun that is protected because the chimney is in between me and the sun. So what is the lesson here? The lesson is you always look for a safe spot, right? Especially with a bridal party. You want to find a space that will fit everybody that protects them from awful light or some weird things like haze. But if you have a system for posing and you can fly through the traditional bridal party poses, then why not get through those and then allow some time at the very end to do some shots that move the groups? Because you may find there's even better light and more creative situations waiting for you if you make space for it and you're aware that it could be coming. Shooting that wide shot was probably my first realization of, oh, maybe we could actually use this light. And then having them walk was what really solidified, yes, we should definitely be shooting in this light. Let's do some more here. However, it would have never worked out if I hadn't noticed the shadow of the chimney on the ground, or basically not even the shadow of the chimney on the ground, but the shadow of the chimney in relationship to it coming back and forth in front of my lens. This happens to me a lot when I'm shooting with really big trees and the glow is coming through the trees and it's beautiful, but I've got to walk and I can tell, like when I come in between the sun and a branch and me, I can tell because I get a little break from that haze and then I will find it again and I will set up and then I'll move my subjects wherever I want them to be because I can't move. I can't change my position because I got to stay right there so that branch is blocking the sun. So I have the glow, I have the look, I have the dimension but I don't have the haze because it's blocked by an object. In this case, it's a chimney. In most cases, it's a tree branch. So if you like this, if you enjoyed this, there's a whole playlist with this type of content where I'm kind of breaking down an image, sharing my thought process, what happened. But if you really think like, oh, that's so nice to see someone shoot from behind the scenes, like that's like real life training from a real life example. I have literally five years of content and it's ever growing. I have a whole vault of this. You can watch me shoot weddings from all over the country. Portrait sessions, family sessions in KGL Access. That's only one piece of KGL Access, but basically it is the home base of the KJ education community online. It's where I get to connect with photographers and it's only $29 a month. You can access that in the link below. You can also try it for free in the link below as well. So thanks for tuning in. Check out this playlist if you want more of this type of information. Like and subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And I will see you next time. Bye. Bye.